Like, <laughs> what are we doing? We can't. We have to. We pretend. we gotta. All right, just start it. I mean, we can we can we can literally make fun of this whole situation yeah. oh, that's, on the show and say that we drank that beer and we refuse to rate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just go. We'll just, we'll figure it out. We'll do it live. All right, here we go. I'm the following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. Woo! Grab his dick and twist it! Oh my god, dude! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Might Be Brews, the season three opener, the podcast where we explore the people, places, and brews of the craft beer world. My name is John. With me as always, Mr. Steve. How you doing? It's like the opener part two. Yeah. I feel say. like I've done this three times now. I think this is the third time this we've done. This is the done. third time. The third intro. Done. It's all right. That's all right. We're coming back. <laughs> it's really not okay. The man behind the board who sometimes knows how to work it, my brother Taylor. Hi, everybody. And we've got a very special guest from PA Brew Review returning to the podcast. Russ, how you doing, Russ? Good. Thanks for having me back. It's uh, it's all right. Worked out. I didn't say anything good in the first part anyway. <laughs> Kev, <laughs> Kev, you're going to love this one. <laughs> you're going to hold this one for a little while. Oh, God. If Kev was here, uh, like... What are you doing, Taylor? The season would just be over. <laughs> he would not leave you alone about it. It would just be over. So let's let's get right into it. This is the second time we've started up. Yes. Yes. We had a little snafu, as they call on the biz. This is the... In the uh, biz. This is the, uh, this is the end of premiere week but this is also the first time that we've recorded anything uh in two months and uh because we're doing this first it, it com- you're, we're doing it first it's coming out last but so, so this is literally just now the first time we've recorded anything yeah, right, correct right, right. Yes. <laughs> we did 10 minutes of no yes. recording anything now i am forever looking at this button to make sure it's red yeah so so for the people out there that don't know what we're talking about we recorded about 17 minutes <laughs> between before taylor did this motion <laughs> I, I, I thought I thought we were being held up. I thought there was a gunman at the door, which is why he had his hands yeah. up. I'm like, yeah. do we have ten minutes left? Like no. he usually doesn't do ten. He does five or two or one minute, yeah. but I'm like, all ten, what does that mean? And I also don't fully extend my arms either <laughs> when I'm trying to tell you this was a major problem. You should have just fucking said something. We weren't recording anyway. Yeah, like you would have interrupted us. <laughs> uh, so, by the way. That guy's guys were not recording. I even like yeah. pressed the button just to see if it would do anything, and I was like Shit. <laughs> so did. so Taylor did not record what we just did. Right. But the good thing is we've got video now. We do. Yes. Yes. So we've got video now, so we're going to have to release that as a... Uh, we're just going to put everything out. Most likely we'll put the thing that we, we fucked up on on Patreon. So make sure you go to patreon.com slash NBN Network uh, to see what we're talking about here and to see the first 17 minutes of... <laughs> it was a great show, what we were doing. Yeah, it was, we, it was, we were it was on fire. It's a great show. It's like we never left. You it's know? never going to get better than that. <laughs> yeah, no. I feel like way thrown off, but it's all right. We're going to make up for it. You can see we've all had a beer. Yeah. Like, uh, you can see there's one empty can up there already, <laughs> yes. which was a very good beer. All right, so let's recap that quick. Uh, Stouts, this was what? Uh, hoppy Pills? Stouts Hoppy Pills from yeah. the Queen of Hops series. So I really, really like Hoppy Pilsners, Hoppy Lagers, things like that. So I, I really enjoyed this. This was really good. And this is the first beer I've had from Stouts, which you guys know already because we did this already. But. <laughs> <laughs> I may have heard that once or twice. I'm just saying it like uh, like you guys haven't heard it before. Say it louder for the people in the back. But yeah, Stouts is, uh, is closing up operations. Did they give a date on that? I think they said next couple months, just couple sort of vague. Months, they said they're exploring selling the brand or, you know, things of that nature. They're keeping the restaurant open and their, their other facility, like an antique shop there. Um, so it's it's not like they're selling the brewery itself, but they, I think they're willing to put the brand to somebody who might carry it on. And they are definitely an OG, especially Carol. Was she the first female brewmaster? Since Prohibition. Since Prohibition. Wow. It's, it's, it's a really... They had a very storied past, and uh, and sorry to see one of the OGs uh, going out. Yeah, I wonder how much of it is her wanting to retire, and how much of it is like just it being such a competitive market that um, you know they, they can't stay open. And yeah. we we kind of talked about it last time you were here, and you know, ten minutes ago also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of uh, of how 
the bigger, you know, size breweries, not the huge breweries, but not the small breweries. Those are the guys that are that are currently kind of in that bubble. Yeah. Stouts was, uh, when you look at the numbers, they were actually smaller than I thought. I think they peaked uh, in 2014 or 15 with like 8,000 barrels a year, oh, maybe wow. a little longer ago. I, I really thought that they were a bigger operation than that. Um, but yeah, it was just, they relied mostly on distribution and uh, more classic styles. And it's just the, cons- the consumer isn't pushing for that. I yeah. Think. It's, it's crazy to think about these um, distribution model, which has been the core of, of the beer business for so long. And, and we've talked about it before that there's this, you know, we, we call it a craft beer bubble where there's so many new breweries opening and so many things happening that unfortunately there's an attrition where these, these breweries that aren't keeping up with trends or aren't following a model that's sustainable are unfortunately closing and there's been a ton of them that, uh, that we, I definitely want to get into, but it's, um, you know, I, I call it this craft beer bubble that's going to burst. And I remember, uh, Ron, I think it's Ron from victory saying that, um, you know, he doesn't see it as a, bur- a bubble that's going to burst. It's more that he wants to get more people into craft beer. There's plenty of people drinking out there. We just have to educate them and get more people into it. So I like to think that that's possible, but we keep seeing breweries close and, um, you know, companies not doing well. Yeah, well, it's it's weird. So we've had this conversation before. I, I don't refer to it as a bubble either. I, I, I think of it more of a like a shakeout. Um, mm. I think there's plenty of room left for the rising tide to, to float as many breweries as we have, at least here in Pennsylvania, and however many will be coming. Um, but a lot of the boats aren't keeping up to maintenance. That's, I think, I think the big problem is that uh, boats that are... I'm continuing the metaphor, but breweries that are, are not paying close attention to the trends, the the trends are, are driving everything right now. It's Absolutely. It's tail wagging the dog kind of thing um, where breweries aren't setting the trends as much as consumers are setting the trends and speaking with their wallets kind of thing. Um, but yes, as far as um, what Ron Kovaleski says, I, I think that's absolutely right. You need to expand the tent. You need to bring more people in. People right. don't realize for as, as uh, explosive as craft beer growth has been, it's still, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's still in high single or medium teens percentage of beer volume uh, that's drunk in America. So, you know, wow. y- y- there's a lot, There's a, we talk about a hoppy pills like this. There's a lot of people that like pills, Taylor was talking about, who would grab this beer and say, hey, this is nice. It's not some sugary thing or whatever their opinion of craft beer is that they make up in their mind yeah. and they can take it and run with it. Well, and it's not like just, it's, it's definitely hoppy. But it's not. That's definitely not an IPA. It's definitely not a knock knock the back of your throat out with bitterness kind of mode. You know, that's just you feel like it's stronger than than your typical. I'm gonna stop somewhere and get a six pack kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like I, that. That's it's, a nice beer. It's a hint of hops. It's, yeah, it's, it's the La- right. Lacroix of craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> the right. Hint of. right. <laughs> it's crazy thinking about um, when we had Seth on. Also, he said that there was a lot more breweries open pre-prohibition that mm-hmm. there was just a local brewery at you know every town or every corner had one and um so i'm kind of curious like is that the the business model even though that was so long ago that's got to continue maybe where if you're just a local hyper local you know just not not trying to distribute across the country but just serve the best beer you can to your local community is that the model that's going to be sustainable I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, I think what you're going to see is there is space for breweries to expand into distribution space. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're starting to see it already is that it's going to come in the way of direct to consumer shipping, right? Sitting on shelves and going through the three tier system and, you know, having your beer sit at Wegmans where they're, you know, they're putting white claw in front of everybody's eyes and your beer sits somewhere until it's not fresh anymore. And then, right. you know, you've got your own other problems there. Um, you look at tired hands, Levante, Beaver Brewing, Mellow Mink, um, I'm sure I'm forgetting one or two, but there there are about a half dozen breweries that already now will ship beer directly to your door anywhere yep. in Pennsylvania. I haven't tried it yet, but I did um I did do a local delivery through Amazon, like a two hour delivery from Whole Foods, and I didn't look into it, but beer was on the menu oh. on the app that you could order. I should have looked into it further, but I, I don't know exactly how that works. I'm assuming it's a lot like the other ones like Levante does where you have to sign for it. With an and produce an ID that you're old enough and that, that you were the one that ordered it, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. But yeah, I, I think the on-premises model, um, similar to a neighborhood bar, that's 
that's the core of most of it. But I think there is room for expansion where a business doesn't have to resign themselves, a brewery, to just sticking within that same 10-mile area. They can use that the technology to be able to have, if you've used the Mercury, mm-hmm. they you just do it on the website. And then they, they yeah. ship it to you. You don't have to call somebody. You don't have to pick up a phone, anything like yep. that. Just do it on the website. And if you're on the other end of the, the state, you can get delivery. It's fantastic. And, and I think the breweries really like that control over their product. They know what's mm-hmm. fresh. They know what's going out. Uh, we were talking on the way over here that, you know, I stopped at a local bottle shop, not quite local, a little bit out, but, uh, and got a IPA and I didn't check the date and it yeah. was, uh, it's a high, high profile place. I'll say, and I got an IPA from October. Yeah. It's, like, it's tough, man. I'm disappointed. Every time I go into a beer store, I just can't imagine how difficult it is to order it to sell it, the person that goes in there to sell their beer. Mm-hmm. There's just so many choices on the shelves. It's, it, I don't know, it's so imp- crazy to, to pick. And um, I don't do it that often anymore. I usually will go do a brewery trip and then bring something home with me. And, and that seems to kind of be, uh, you know, the, the form that I've fallen into. But I think we need to crack another beer. Do we want to get into our styling and profiling segment? Let's do it. Let's get Woo! after it. Let's do it. Woo! What did we uh, what did we bring this time? All right, so we were talking uh, when we when we last left our viewing audience, we <laughs> were in the uh, in the Czech realm of beers, and there's a lot of Czech different variations of the pale lager and the amber lager, and and a lot of them might be able to get, might not be able to get. They're very similar to some of the other styles. I was going to skip over these. I was going to go straight to the uh, Munich Hells, which is next, but I, I saw the the Czech premium pale lager and listed under the commercial examples was the Pilsner Yerquell. And it made me think that this is one of the craft beers that I've seen on the shelf forever. You see it everywhere you go. Forever. Forever. Absolutely. And I've never had one. I want to say I might've had it on draft before, but I don't know. And, and, and it got me thinking what craft beers do you know? Like, it sounds silly that you should have had this beer, but do you have any that you feel like I should have had that, but I've just never, never grabbed it. I've never purchased it. I've never come across it. I don't know. I feel like I, um, I had a long stretch of transitioning between like twisted teas and Jack and Cokes into craft beer where I was drinking a lot of these macros where I was going for blue moons, um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Stella's I've had, all kinds of those, and and I don't know, nothing's really coming to mind. Something that, something that I uh, I haven't had that I feel like I should have. I don't know. Anything for you, Russ? You yeah, for me? for me, it's Sierra Nevada Celebration, oh, um, and and I've had a hundred people tell me it's among the best beers they've ever had, and they look forward to its release every year, even now when a, a brewery like Sierra Nevada is not hype anymore. Um, and I just I haven't. I've had plenty of pale ale. The Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I just have never gotten around to uh, to grabbing a celebration. Celebration was one of the earlier IPAs that I got into, and it's a fresh hop that comes out closer to Christmas time. It's almost mm-hmm. like a November December release. And um, I don't know if you've seen on our Facebook post that I posted a uh, a table that I'm trying to do a bottle cap project on, um, and a bunch of the the caps I saw were Sierra Nevada. They were the red cap, and I know they were from different six packs of celebration that I've had over nice. the. Uh, over the years. I was actually just there a couple weeks ago, Sierra Nevada. How was it? I saw the It was uh, really pictures. cool. Um, I wish I was there during the daytime because I was uh, just north of Sacramento. And if anybody's familiar with Northern California, there's just these beautiful mountain ranges everywhere. But I was kind of away from them. So I was driving towards Chico, towards um, you know where, where these beautiful mountain ranges are. But it got dark by the time I was there. So I didn't have as pretty of a view of all the mountains and everything. But, um, man, just a beautiful facility. Of course, the beers are fantastic. Um, I had a, I had a few samplers, um, you know, probably, probably sampled six or eight beers, uh, just little pours. And, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it's a really, really cool place. And, uh, yeah, and solid beers. All right. Well, the Czech premium pale lager, uh, overall impression, rich, characterful, pale Czech lager, with considerable malt and hop character and a long, rounded finish. Complex, yet well-balanced and refreshing. Woo! I feel like I want to, like, rate it or, or talk about it, and then everything that you say is just so perfectly done. 
It's like, how the fuck do you say anything to like to follow that? But I don't know. Compared to that hoppy lager, this is like really sweet to me. You know, mm-hmm. like that kind of uh, maybe mess my palate up a little bit. This is definitely like full body. There's a lot going on to it. Um, as much as it's like drinkable at the same time, it's, uh, it's not like as crushable as something that's lighter. I guess it's a, it's a little bit heavier. I feel like there's a little bit more of a ride to this one, as you like to say. I agree with that. Because it's like really crisp and mm-hmm. uh, at the start. And then I feel like a minute later, it's like bitter. Mm-hmm. But it's like there's hasn't I haven't taken another sip, and it's just like it's still there lingering. I'm st- it's still evolving. Yeah, it's interesting. It, that's a it, I I do think that like it's got a, a nice uh, crispness to it, mm-hmm. the hoppiness, some sweet malt. Um, you know, it's a clean finish. It, I don't know. It's good. This is a good beer. Fuck, man, it is weird not rating it, right? Yeah. I just want to be like, and it's uh, this. So this is uh, something that we talked about on the uh, the, on lost, the forgotten the lost bit. forgotten episode. Yeah. We <laughs> well, we t- we discussed this at the on the the season finale right. of season two. Should we keep rating beers? And uh, we had a full discussion on this on our uh, <laughs> <laughs> first ep- uh, try at this episode. But we well, had no, we still had no resolution though. That's a, a, a great teaser. Become yeah. a, become a Patreon, Patreon. Yeah. and find and find yeah. out what yeah. find out what Taylor thinks it means to sink a beer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was such that, good that, content. That's the best part. I told Taylor, I was like, you got to put a fucking sink in here. So if it's not good, we'll just dump it down the sink. And he was like, every time you said drink it or sink it, I just imagined a ship sinking. He was seeing the Titanic. An actual kitchen sink never crossed his mind. Never. That that's what not, we were referring to. Not one to. time. That's so funny. The not HMS one time. Budweiser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's funny. That's so it. in our style segment, so the next beers up are Czech Amber Lager, which I'm um, looking for my commercial examples. Uh, Bernard Jovsoski Lefkalanka. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. Pivar Vasklaski Klumes Dumion. I don't know any of these beers. I don't know where to <laughs> find any of these beers. Um, so we'll probably skip to the Munich Hells uh, category next. So if anybody wants a specific Munich Hells lager for us to try next time, give us a shout. Hit we'll, us up. Uh, we'll see what we got. I'm gonna put in my butt and twist it. Absolutely. Hey, so um, I was gonna love this so much. <laughs> Did we, we are we, we recording right? We're on. We are. are we still, I see yeah, numbers. We're still on. Can yeah, people d- hear me? Does the red button mean it's, stop or the, <laughs> the green button mean stop? We're, we're still going. Yeah, we're okay. still going. We're good to go so far. Did we talk about what we did on break yet? No, we haven't. On this well, episode, we this did. Version? Yeah, not not, we not this to. version. Also, real quick, uh, we're sponsored by Unomia. UnomiaCBD.com. Uh, we got some of their products up there. Uh, promo code MBN, twenty percent off, free shipping, free stuff. Uh, the good people over there at You Know Me will take really good care of you. Uh, go to patreon.com slash NBN Network for more content. We're putting out uh, a video for the Patreon part two as well. Uh, so a lot of things going on here. Uh, we talked about it when we weren't recording, but uh, the new studio is pretty awesome. We're on YouTube. Search for YouTube, um, NBN Network on YouTube, and you'll find us. Subscribe. Smash the like button. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting forever to say that. And Smash gotta, the like button. Then you got to get on notifications too. Yeah. Oh, is that the the new thing now? You got to subscribe gotta and get on notifications. notifications. Yeah. Smash the button. <laughs> There's no other way. You cannot press it. No, you it have to be smash smashed. it. If you don't smash it, it won't record. Borderline. That's, is that what you have to, about? That's what you I have, have to smash. I have to the start button. smashing buttons. Yeah. <laughs> so what? It. I was gonna say, uh, what has everybody been up to during break? I feel like. We're asking this again because I already know the answer, but Steve, go ahead. I didn't do anything. Yeah. That was super (laughs) exciting, right? I grew a beard. You grew a beard. You grew a beard. beard. Successfully. It's a sick beard, bro. It's good. It is. is. I did dry January, which was interesting. I did the entire month, uh, 31 days, which I haven't done before. But um, I've, I've gotten close to a full... A full thirty-one days, but um, but it was it was interesting. It was fun. Did you go non-alcoholic options? I, you know, I tried one. I was gonna get the uh, the Heineken when I saw that one at, at Wegmans, but I ended up going with the Athletic Brewing. I think is what it's called, and uh, I had heard good things about it, and uh, it was okay. It wasn't great. It reminded me kind of the hop tea, Ooh. which <laughs> I know you guys didn't like. Oh. I was I was all right with it, but it, it's okay. It's um. It was all right. Did you do the Lagunitas hop water yet? No, no, I didn't. I mean, have you? I did. How was it? It wasn't good. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to. You know, 
Has anybody tried the Bud Light seltzers yet? No. 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 I haven't tried them. No, I haven't. CJ, no. you tried them? Yeah. You liked them? Yeah. Eh. I keep forgetting that CJ's here. We've done the intro twice and introduced everybody, and he's been behind me. Well, CJ's behind the scenes right now. I know. He's literally behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Yeah, he's right. behind I know, the scene. right? He's over there. <laughs> but I just keep forgetting. How you doing, CJ? Good. All right. <laughs> we haven't even offered him any beer or anything. He's just yeah. fucking sitting yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do better at that. Yeah. I, I literally keep forgetting. Here you go. CJ, some, Chug CJ, that. Here's some beer. Your yeah, here's some beer, dude. Um, <laughs> I, I actually just went up to uh, upstate New York, and uh, I saw mom and dad, mm. Taylor, and uh, not far from them, they just opened a new brewery called Wood Kettle Brewing, and uh, it was funny. Like, dad was, like, super excited to take me to a brewery. He was like, dude, let's go. It's new. Let's like, bond. Yeah, right? <laughs> but uh, but it was cool, man. It was a really cool space. Uh, the beers were actually really good. I'm trying to remember. I had a flight there. We were all trying different stuff. You know, they had New England IPAs on and Hoppy West Coast IPAs. And I had, you know, a, a Pilsner and a lager. And um, but I, I can't remember what it was. That, I think there was a barrel-aged, I'm pretty, yeah, it was a barrel-aged uh, barley wine that they had that was just fantastic. It was so good. And um, so I, I got to chat with them a little bit. It was a cool place. But uh, I also hit up other half um, in Rochester on the way home, which uh, is always solid. That place was jumping. And you there were so many people there. Did not get a, a gun drawn on you, right? I did not. You were safe. <laughs> I did not. I don't know if Taylor knows. Uh, Taylor might not have heard that. Uh, yeah, that I don't news. know if you heard anything about that. But um, other were, half. Were you the one with the gun? Everybody was saying that. <laughs> it was probably me, but no. Um, in other half in Brooklyn. They were doing a uh, an anniversary release, mm-hmm. so there was more people than usual lined up outside, and uh, I guess there was somebody. If I read it correctly, lined up the even, night before. This yeah. is still the night before. They were lined up overnight. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. It was like so it was 10, 11 before. o'clock at yes. night. I didn't know that at all. But I believe the person did not live there. It was like an Airbnb deal. Mm-hmm. So he was just yep. whoever was there was there temporarily, and who knows what caused it? But the guy that was in the building drew a gun on the people in line. Oh, so this guy was like, yo, what are you guys waiting in line for? And they were like, we're waiting in line for beer. And they're like, that's fucking dumb. And they started yelling back and forth. And a guy goes back to his Airbnb and pulls out his no shit. His Glock and comes over. Hey, man. That's crazy. It's fucking crazy. That's crazy. So, <laughs> so John risked his so life. That's what you did? I did. To bring us some other half. I wasn't that's in that part of New York, but oh. I we're going to the other one. We're going to have another half in the second half of the episode. So yeah. did, did dad use uh, the word wicked to, de- to describe any of the beers? No. This is a wicked beer. I don't think so. He might have. They're he got, weird. Is I that Massachusetts C kind of I don't know what there? the fuck they're doing. They, they, they said wicked a couple times last wicked. time I saw him, and I was like, what are you talking about? What are you doing? It's a wicked lager. Dude, I've actually been up there a we're lot We're making lately. wicked meatball subs. Yeah. I don't even say subs ever. Did you, <laughs> did you okay boomer your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Like looked at him like whoa, no, and everything's meatless. They keep trying to trick you. I know. I'm they're, not like, <laughs> they're like, we're gonna tell Taylor that we're uh, we're making yeah. meatballs, but they're gonna be meatless meatballs, yeah. and we're gonna get them zero percent chance. <laughs> are they at least like the Beyond Meat, or are they just like totally? Yeah, trying it's, to, like, it's Beyond Meat. Crush up sure. some. Yeah, my dad's like uh, and leaves. Pretty much vegetarian. He eats uh, like uh, seafood sometimes. What is that? Pescatarian. Something like that. I say zero percent chance, but my parents definitely got me to eat dog treats on April Fools. <laughs> they tell you had weed in it or what? No, they told me that they made fresh baked cookies, but they didn't look like dog bones or nothing. They just looked like a you know little circle. <laughs> I was like, oh okay, these look dumb, but I guess I'll try one. I don't want to be impolite. And then they're like chuckling in the other room, like ha ha. You just ate dog treats. I'm like, what the fuck, guys? It's terrible. <laughs> Did you like notice on the first bite? Like, yeah, this it was is horrible. Fucking, yeah, okay. no, I just threw it in the trash. But then I was like, oh yeah, really good. And they're like, it's dog treats. <laughs> Great. So, so you also went up to Niagara Falls a little bit. Yeah, I did. That was really cool because it was uh, in the middle of the fucking, like, there was a snowstorm. We had like a, I don't know, six inches of snow. So it was really neat. There wasn't a lot of people around. There was still people walking around the park, but uh, I'd never been there before. So um, we went with the family. Dude, I'll tell you that Sheraton that's right there is fantastic because they have so much stuff for kids to do. There's an arcade. Um, so were like, you all on the Canadian side or were you on the U.S. US side? side? So you stayed we on the We were going to cross to the other side, um, but I forgot the kids' birth certificates. I think that's yeah. all you need. I think for your ages, you do, you can. 
For them, yeah. yeah. I think for the younger ages, birth certificates are fine. For us, I thought you needed passports, but I think adults, all you need is a U.S. license that's active. We read, so we, I don't know. So it was funny when you posted that, uh, the wife and kids and I had planned, we're going up over Memorial Day, mm-hmm. and we're going to the Canadian side. We've got a place like oh, nice. one of those health hotels that's right on the falls. Yeah. I got the hotel, the, the falls view room and the whole thing. Oh, nice. So I think you do, there's a passport card. Okay. And there's a passport book. Okay. You can get the card to go in. All right. So we're actually doing that next weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, what everybody tells you about like the falls looking nicer from the Canadian side, it's a hundred percent true. Like the fuck mm. you're like behind the falls Is on it? the US side. Yeah. Yeah. They have like a little bit of a bump out that you can see like the falls, but um, you really don't get a good view on it. So I'm, I'm excited for you to see it from the Canadian side. I'm sure it's going to be dope. This is our, our girl's birthday is around that time. So it's their birthday gift instead of going like bounce you or some yeah, <laughs> paying $900 for kids to jump around and eat cake for two minutes. We're like, let's take a little trip. Yeah. Go see some, go see some land. Yeah. That's awesome. But not, yeah. We had a blast. Not looking forward to the drive. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's not good. good. It's straight. No, it's not good. <laughs> it's straight. It's easy to get to. Yeah. You know, so how far out? Of, so I'm, you know, we're leaving our house. How how far out of the way is other half? It, it's not bad. Um, it probably is going to add like, you know, twenty minutes each way, like off route. So you're looking at so 40, forty minutes, minutes. of extra travel, um, plus however long you're going to be there. I might do that on the way home. That's what we did because we're gonna we're gonna leave on the Sunday before Memorial Day, at like six in the morning, and just mm-hmm. get up there, and then we'll be up there Sunday through. Wednesday, we're going to come back on Wednesday. So I'll, I'll look it up for you. I forget the name of the restaurant. They don't have food there. We planned it's a it restaurant out to be with the, no food. No, they don't have food at other house. At other, okay. But there's restaurants nearby, and uh, we knew we were going to stop around lunch. So there's um, a restaurant, like a little mom and pop, really small, like family restaurant place. But they have an app. So my wife on the way there, she ordered food, paid for it on her phone before we got there. And then I picked that up and then just went right across the street to the other half. That's a good move. And, um, and yeah, so me and the kids, we had kids there. Um, not everybody's crazy about that, but they absolutely welcome it. They had a security guard there working on the front door. And when we walked up, he brought out two lollipops and gave lollipops yeah. to the kids. And they had dog treats for dogs because you can bring dogs in. Nice. Um, which didn't go well. Their two dogs got into a fight while we were there. <laughs> we had to separate them. And they were like, can you guys, you know, take the dog outside if they're not going to behave and whatever. But, um it, it was it was a good time. Like the kids had fun. Um, the beer was obviously fantastic. I brought a few home, so good stuff. What do we got? What are we getting into? Yeah, what do we get here? This is a punch from Tired Hands. They call it a New Zealand double IPA. I'd, I'd have to look up. I think it's Nelson and Galaxy hops. Um, but yeah, it's a it's more of an earthy hop than a lot of the hazy IPAs that you get to. And the uh, description on the can is uh, punges, 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 punges. And it says that a lot. Punge is or punges? Punge is. Punge is punge, punge. is punge, is punge, is punge. Is punge. Is punge. I'm just going to have to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor, what, it. Do you, what do you think of this bad boy? I can. I really like this beer. You dig it? I yeah. really like this beer. That surprises like me. Like, it's, it's really citrusy. Uh, it's got a, a really good, just bold taste. Uh, but it's not overly rugged. It's not like the 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 hops aren't overdoing it. It's not it's not going above and beyond and crushing the taste like a lot of doubles I feel like do. And I I know we're we're not rating these things, but <laughs> this is this gets an air horn. This, I would drink this frequently. You know, they're very um, tired. Hands is very experimental, and, and really I've talked about beer. this before. But they're um. The, the punge, the pineal, the hop hands, you know, the technicolor, technicolor splendor. What is punge? What does that mean? Is that the punge kind is, of hop? Punge is punge is punge. No, yeah, I, I think it's, it's <laughs> probably know. just a play on the word pungent, Okay, if okay. I had to guess. Okay. Yeah, I would guess that, but um, this sense. is a great beer. Like you said, it's juicy. I kind of like um, these New Zealand hops. I'm trying to think of other beers that I've had them in, but I've seen them described before, and I, I do think they're a little unique, And uh, but yeah, this is a great beer. It's almost like a peppery note to it. Yeah. Good call on that. Like yeah, it's, it's just a good balance of like citrusy, juiciness, bitterness. You know, everything kind of uh, plays well together. And I don't know, Tired Hands is awesome. 
definitely yeah. judged it by the cover. Like I saw a double on there, and I was like, "Oh, I'm not going to like this," but I really liked his beer. Bang bang, really good. That's why. So I said I was surprised you liked it, not because it's not great. I love it. Yeah. Um, but it does, it, as uh, Steve points out, it has a peppery flavor, has a little earthy flavor to mm-hmm. it. I like that it balances out a lot of those citrus fruity yeah. notes. Um, some people are like, "Oh, if I came for a citrus fruity beer, I want a citrus fruity beer," and they don't like the uh, the underlying taste that's balancing it out. So. Glad really you enjoy good. it. Really good. Really so good. So Tired Hands distributes kegs, but not cans, right? You can't get cans of Tired Hands at Exton Beverage, right? No. Right. Only at can releases. You don't really see them anywhere else. They have. They did open up that pop-up in uh, Center City at yeah, the right. uh, Comcast building, that, but it's still there. Yeah. Yeah, they're self-distributing their cans. Yeah, that's But they also do a, I um, can't remember the, the name of their delivery device. Yeah, Dudley Direct. Dudley. Yeah. Yep. And is that cans or is that just their bottles? I thought when I looked on their website, it was just some of their like. It was bottles, bottles originally, and now they've added cans to it. It's awesome. Most of their cans these days, you'll see within a couple of days after the release, they'll pop up on the delivery service. Um, but we'll see how it goes. They're about to open a brew pub in Philadelphia and in, in like uh, Fishtown. I remember he bought a building, and I, I don't know if it's that's a, the same one or not. It, honestly, in podcast time, it, it there's a chance it might be open by the time people are listening to this. Wow. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty imminent. And then they have their beer garden, excuse me, which is a couple blocks from there, which they're going to be opening as well. So you can't get their cans by going to a dis- distributor, but they're doing a good job of spreading themselves out with their in-house options to yeah. go grab their beer. And they have cans. I'm assuming they'll have cans at the new place. So now I've noticed, you know, when they first started doing can releases, if you weren't lined up, you weren't getting any. But now they're lasting a little bit longer, and I don't know if that's a product of people not – Wanting them as much? Are they making more? Is it a little bit of both? Are they spread out? I don't know what's going on there with that. And yeah, not that and it matters. Again, without any inside information, I, th- I think it's both. Um, I think that the hype of it has died down. Um, no matter how good the beers are, and Tired Hands makes great beers, um, there are some people that want it for the hype, and those people are, are largely culled out at this point, uh, at least from the fanatical can release lines and things like that. Um but I, I, I think they've produced a lot more. They've expanded. Um, they're they're running a lot more batches. And they're using that to geographically put their beer closer to people. Mm-hmm. So people Which is don't, smart. Yeah, so people won't have to drive to Ardmore. Because if you're in Center City, Philadelphia, trying to drive to Ardmore, I mean, that's a pain in the butt. Right. So We've got a lot to talk about. Um, I read some a comment, actually, online about Treehouse okay. and how much they think they did in can sales. Um, but it's interesting because they're obviously a, uh, you can only purchase them at the brewery. Um, you know, but there's a lot of stuff that we got to talk about that we're going to get to. We got to take a quick break and uh, hear from our sponsors and we will be right back with more might be brews. All right, everybody. Welcome back it to a recording it feels so good to be back. We're recording, right? We're on. We're on. The red button is on. It's red. It's all good. Welcome back to Might Be Brews. Please check out our sponsors at Unomia CBD. I don't know if I said this on the last uh, whatever fucking how many times we've recorded today, but the um, <laughs> the multivitamins, the CBD multivitamins. Yeah, I love them. They're delicious. They're surprisingly delicious. Yeah, and I take one. I have one almost every t- every day before bed, and I fucking sleep fantastic. I feel great when I wake up. Highly recommended. You know me as CBD.com. E-U-N-O-M-I-A-C-B-D.com. I can still spell it after all this time off. You got it. Check dude. me out. Yo, really good job. And uh, once again, promo code MBN, 20% off, free shipping, free stuff. Free stuff, dude. We can't tell you how serious we are. Like, you order one thing, they're going to put some other shit in there. Yep, and, and this stuff's not cheap. Like, we're not, like, they know that, we know that, everybody knows that. Like, But it's worth it, and if you use our promo code, you're going to get some free stuff with it. Wife got some free lollipops. I don't know if anybody's going to be able to tell. The lollipops I'm, are I'm, I, I just yeah. went and checked. I keep, like, I, I scratched my balls. Yeah. And I wow. just realized that we were being filmed. And I, like, looked up, like, can they see that if I'm fucking scratching my balls? Well, they can see it now. I shouldn't have even brought that up. Nobody would have even known. But yeah. fuck it. So go back on YouTube and watch and see if you can tell when I'm scratching my nuts so that we get more plays. How about that? For the network. It's for the better of the network. I can't see myself scratching my yeah. balls, so we're good. I'm good. Uh, Hashtag itchy. Itchy sack. <laughs> Let's go. Let's drink some beers. Let's get into the Saranac S'more Porter. 
Let's, let's do it. Let's do is it. that from Lake Saranac, New York? Uh, I know Saranac is in New York. I do not know their lakeside property or not. I've been to, I forget if it's, wait, if it's Lake Placid, then it's Saranac Lake. Oh, I don't know. I don't think, you know what I mean? I don't say that middle way. Is that what you're saying? No, like, I, I, sometimes I call it so Lake Saranac. Sometimes I say Saranac Lake. But is it Saranac or Sarnac? I don't know. I think I said it both ways. Sarnac. Sarnac? So uh, my wife's friend Shiloh, shout out to Shiloh, uh, gave us this one. She uh, What's up, girl? started working with my <laughs> wife, and, and they were talking about beer, and she was like, oh, I like beer. And Jamie was like, yeah, my husband kind of <laughs> likes beer. <laughs> so I've been uh, hooking her up with all the different uh, – she likes the stouts and darker stuff, so every time I get something uh, a little special, I, I try and toss her one. And I use the excuse of, well, I, I'm going to get this beer because I'll give Shiloh one. And then the wife's like, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and grab that. So then I get a three-pack and – <laughs> Shiloh gets one and everybody's happy. <laughs> there you go. It smells awesome. Ooh, it smells really good. It does. You know, I, I met a guy recently. He said, I'm a big craft beer guy. And I go, oh, yeah? And I d- he didn't know anything about me. I didn't say anything about how, how much I'm into craft beer. He goes, all I drink are dark beers now. And I thought that was an interesting take. Like, some people, I think, just uh, like what they like. And they get into a certain style and, and they just stick to it. But mm-hmm. um, I couldn't imagine that, man. I just love riding the the styles and and having different uh you know being into different styles and different seasons i almost don't want to drink it i just want to keep smelling it dude this smells fantastic this is a wild beer the smell is crazy good it backs it up i mean that's always the concern it smells so good will it taste uh, good enough to back it up it says distinctive tasting yet truly drinkable um and i'm i fully agree with that it is drinkable for me i always say it man it's thin for me it's a porter yeah. Let it be a porter. I know, right? So make it be a stout. Let it be a porter. I know. Can it live, John? Can it live? 6.2% s'more porter. Look, they, they nailed the flavor. It's definitely going on. Like, there. they nailed the flavor. A lot of people talk a lot of like, oh, we got this flavor and it's really good. That, like, you read the label, that's what you're tasting. And it's, t- I don't know how you get a marshmallow flavor. Like, I don't know how you create that in a beer. Do you just throw... 50 pounds of marshmallows in a barrel? I don't think so. I don't know. But there is a marshmallow taste to it. What's this. even more impressive to me is, like, not only did they get the marshmallow, but they got, like, the burnt marshmallow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the slightly charred, like, it's... Listen to this yeah. guy. I know, right? This fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have an evolved palate, you know, since, <laughs> since you guys saw me last. Still brings Bud Light line to my house when <laughs> yeah. talking about burnt marshmallow. I know. <laughs> True story. <laughs> That's amazing. I think there's still two left in my fridge, by the way. I think I only had two at night. I, I had one the next day because you guys were over on the 4th. The 5th yeah. is, the, is the last beer that I had, and it was at freaking Bud Light Lime, and it tasted like like La Croix with, <laughs> with extra water added to it. Like, I couldn't taste anything of it. Uh, <laughs> dude, we should probably talk about this off air, but do you do you have my, my bag? I got everything, my bag. My wife was about to throw your shit out in the street. No. I was like looking for it to come here, and I was like, "Where the fuck is that?" I, was like, yeah. I think I left everything at Steve, and because I went into like dry January right after that, I was like, it's "I got dead your to cro- me. crock pot, I got your spoon." <laughs> oh, that's right, you have a crock pot too. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I went and bought a new crock pot. I've been dipping my balls in the old one. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I bought a new crock pot. <laughs> that's hilarious. Really? Yeah, because you couldn't BJ's. find it, or what well, kind of? You wanted a spare? You didn't I forgot, know I, I had. Forgot it, it was there. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> Hope you didn't buy a new spoon too. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. Um, I guess let's let's talk to Russ because I want to know what's new with PA Brew Review. Yes, I got to say, like one of the benefits to being signed up to your website and, and everything like that is I was at work recently, and I get this fucking email that's like, "Hey, Attic Brewing Company is doing a soft opening this day," and I'm like, "That's fucking today," and I'm like, "That's that's right now," and then I looked it up on Google Maps and I'm like, "That's right fucking down the street from where I am." So I was like, this is fantastic. Like, I'm, this is perfect timing. And then I drive down the street, go to the brewery, and you're sitting there at the fucking bar, and we got to hang out and talk. But, um, yeah, so what's new with PA Brew Review? What's going on? Yeah, so um, you're, you're right. Uh, what we always try to say is we, we tend to be more evergreen content with the site itself. We're not a breaking news website, but our, our email list, right, the newsletter that we have, we do send out every week what's coming up, where it is, when it's going to open, if places close, things like that. So we do keep everybody up to date. For people that don't know, tell us what PA Brew Review is. 
Yeah, so PA Brew Review was was created essentially as a consumer tool to keep track of all the breweries um, that are opening across the state. So uh, it was about 2014, 2015, and since then there's been I always like to quote there's been more than more than one brewery per week opening That's in Pennsylvania crazy. continually so until now. Um, and we track all locations, so it's not always brand new brewing companies, but a new location for an existing company, things like that. Gotcha. Um, this year, actually, this is the first year uh, post prohibition that more than 100 brewing locations opened up in no, 2019. I should say this past year was the first year that more than 100 brewing locations opened up in Pennsylvania. I think it was like 107 that opened up. Wow, so, crazy! Yeah. yeah. Um, so th- that's where I mean that's where the whole thing started from. As a consumer, it was overwhelming. You didn't know where they were. Some were small, some were big, and the whole variety of what you would get when you went there, the experience that you had. Um, not that there's a good experience or a bad experience. There's a, just a preference that you have as a consumer. Am I drinking beer in the back of an industrial complex? Some people like that. Some people want a whole big place where they can sit on a picnic table and have their kids there and that kind yeah. of thing. What are their hours? Do they have food? All yeah. that stuff. Pet friendly? Yeah. So then we, we, we wound up taking, it's 28 different details that we list for each brewery. Um, and like you said, you can go, you can check it on the map. You can see where they are. You click on it. You see what uh, characteristics they have. I forget when we talked last time if we had it up and running or not, but we have a filter now on the map um, where you can literally just click the attributes that you're looking for, and it sorts itself. So you essentially say, I want a dog-friendly brewery. I'm, I want to bring my dog somewhere. And you just select the filter, and now you're only looking at dog-friendly breweries. Nice. You know, in the, in the area where you are. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the – my voice is going. Um, that's the, the essence of it. Um, what we've done since the last time we talked, again, because of the evergreen content – Plugging along, um, just a, a lot more forward forward movement. And what we can do is there's a rating system component. We can take the data that the breweries give us and the data that the consumers give us, and we work closely with a lot of different um, people in the industry um, to take that data and get insights from it, essentially. Um, we work with the Brewers Association to uh, help make sure that everything is up to date with their lists. We work with uh, Brew To Do List, which is a company that does physical paper printouts that you can check off for different states um, where they're affiliate for Pennsylvania to make sure everything's up to date. And we work directly with breweries um, to give them insights, A, about what their plan forward is in terms of how many how many breweries are opening up near you. If you have expansion plans, where's a good place for you to expand to? Um, and not only looking at your company individually, but also here's how other companies have done it and it either worked out positively or negatively. Um, I brought my cheat sheets here, you know, in a minute I can talk about, um, all the breweries that closed in, in 2019 and the breweries that expanded. Um, some of them, the expansions are working great. Some of them, the expansions didn't work and they had to contract back to just their original location. We work with breweries to help coordinate what the data means for how they can move forward. We talked before about being an on-premises model. Um, it's not for everyone, right? And we, the breweries want to know, is it working? If I expand it, Will I lose that appeal if I, you know, start putting beer out in distribution, or if I open two or three more locations? Um, am I losing that appeal of being a hometown brewery, just where we opened originally? Sure. Um, so yeah, we, we do a lot of that. A lot of the stuff we do is behind the scenes like that. Uh, we're not in we're not in a direct to consumer situation other than here's the website, have at it, mm-hmm. you know, use it for for everything you can. Um, we still list we still list the can releases on the event calendar for the last couple of months due to a couple of different reasons. We haven't been listing every single event like we were before. We listed, I think, 13,000 events in 2019. Oh, yeah. We're working on some some more efficient ways yeah. <laughs> to get some yeah. input, it right? It takes so, a lot so much information. Sure. Uh, right, yeah. And, and that was great, too, because you could sort it. I think we talked about last time, mm-hmm. pardon me, um, about going to karaoke. and Say, oh, well, I can yep. sort the calendar, just show me karaoke at a brewery. Mm-hmm. I can sort the calendar by can release or beer dinner or whatever event that they're doing, live music kind of thing. Um, so it, it's always been there. We, we work, again, you, you get the newsletter, so you know how much everything changes week to week. Yeah. We, we work very hard week to week to keep everything up to date. It just, there's no flashing sign on the website. It's just, you go to our website and it's the most up-to-date resource for it. Gotcha. But, you know, we, we're not sending out like big memos to everybody saying, hey, we added these, you know, new breweries and things like that. We have right now, we have 94, I think, breweries that are pending Right, so we know which breweries are oh, coming, yep. where they are, that kind of thing. Um, 
we try as much as possible to help promote the breweries, get them, you know, the marketing and get things excited for it. Yeah. You just can't with that many, you just can't do it for all of them. Yeah. Right? Sure. So a lot of times they just show up on the, on the site and it's just up to date and then the consumer doesn't hear anything. It's just the best experience for them. 94 pending. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. So hey, that's February. You said a hundred or so, uh, how many opened last year in 2019? Oh, like, there were 107 new brewery locations. New brewery locations. Including expansions of existing breweries. How many brewery locations are there total in PA? Do you have any idea? I didn't run that exact number, and I should have. Um, 450. Wow. Probably a, a just off-the-cuff guess. Wow. Uh, it's in that ballpark. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I think, given that number we talked about with the pending breweries and the expansions that will continue to occur that we don't know about yet, we'll probably top 500 physical brewery locations this year wow. in, in Pennsylvania, which is which is stunning. And we talked a little before about the bubble or the shakeout or, you know, being able to uh, equate how much demand there is for it. Um, the Brewers Association, Bart Watson is the economist there, and he puts out some great material. And he was showing, it was a chart about that there's actually a surprising um, correlation between how many farmers markets a state has and how many brewers they have. Huh. It's very interesting. It's kind it of... Is. Kind of a, a, a huh. tangent, huh. right? It, it was. I mean, it, you looked at it, and it was. It was you, the correlation. But anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. But but what it did was it it compared the breweries per capita to the farmers market per capita. And if you looked at that chart, uh, right now Pennsylvania is smack dab in the middle, twenty fourth in the country for breweries per capita. Huh. Right. So yeah. so people are like, well, there's a ton of breweries in Pennsylvania. It's too much. I don't know if we can really get more. We're halfway to the. Vermont, obviously the one that's way in the outlier, but, um, you know, the, the top level of breweries mm -hmm. are, those states are much more saturated per capita in terms of the actual amount of people that are there. Wow. I'm surprised we're that low. Yeah, me too. I would have guessed PA would be in the top 10 mm -hmm. per capita. That's me what too. I mean. And, that, and that's the sense that people have when they're talking about that and saying, how much more can we really support? It doesn't mean we definitely can support more. But it's but other states are doing more, right? It, it brings it brings you back to that perspective of, of looking and saying, oh yeah, I know we we're not pushing it, you know, as far as some of these other states have. Um, it's still early. It's easy to forget that other than Colorado and Oregon and California and, and some certain places, pretty much other than that, the craft beer revolution, so to speak, is still pretty young. So it's hard to know if those places that are very saturated will be able to keep, keep that up, sustained. or if there'll be a drawback. So, you know, you don't want to read too much into it where you're assuming that it's a for sure thing. Um, but it is interesting because people don't think that they're, um, that there's that much room left in Pennsylvania if you just ask them off the cuff. Hasn't the Pennsylvania government been really into helping support breweries open and things like that? Or as well as like because of the, um, the agriculture side of it with like farming and the hops and the malts and things like that, that um, I, I, at least I thought I understood. Maybe it was from Port and PA, but yeah. um, I remember seeing something like that. Yeah, so they've done a lot. Uh, they've done really great things. So there was the grant program, which Port and PA was supported by the grant program. Mm -hmm. PA Brew Review was supported by the grant program um, for the marketing and things like that. They've supported research into hops and hop growing in the region and things like that. What you see a lot is the state and even the federal government um, giving these sort of revitalization loans. And that's what's popping up a lot is that a brewery is saying, hey, listen, here's a... Here's a town that has, you know, fallen on tough times. People aren't coming to live here because there's nothing exciting to do. This and that. Brewing, uh, and, and I don't want to talk out of turn because I'm not a brewer, but but brewing is one of those types of industries that can survive there before the revitalization comes. Gotcha. They, they can be the sort of anchor of the yep. town yeah. um, and survive long enough for everybody else to come in and then thrive together. Whereas other businesses, you know, if you're, I'm just making this off the top of my head, but if you're like an ice cream shop, and there's nothing else to do to do downtown. People might not come just for the ice cream shop, but breweries have shown staying power to be able to actually start that trend, and they've been getting grants through the state and through federal re revitalization programs to do that. And that's and that's what's cool. And the results are pretty clear that having the brewery is a great Kickstarter for it. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I feel like I've heard that before when a um, a brewery moves into an area. 
it just makes that that town or that strip on that road a, a fantastic place for more tenants, more stores to open. It's just great for the community in general. Yeah, and local to us, Phoenixville is a pretty good example of that. Phoenixville really had a nice revitalization of their downtown yeah. with so many different breweries coming in. I'm hoping the same thing kind of happens in Coatesville. There's a new Coatesville brewery set to open. I haven't heard an exact date. I don't know if you have. It's of, spring, summer. Spring, I think. summer. Yeah. Um, but they could desperately need some revitalization down there. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. But so uh, I'll, I'll be a little coy about it. So I, I told you the total number from 2019. I, I ran the numbers since I was here last in May of 2019 when mm-hmm. I was here with you guys. Since then, there have been 64 new brewery locations opening. If you had to guess, of those 64, how many of them were brand new breweries opening and how many of them were expansion locations of existing breweries? For some reason, I want to say half, but an educated guess would say that, shit, I don't know, man. I, I, I guess 60% are new locations. I'll uh, go half and half. Yeah. It, so, it, it, you know, it's kind of a lame question because it does turn out to be almost half and half. It's 34 and 30. 34 um, new brewery locations and 30 expansions. Um, the interesting thing is that as recently as two or three years ago, those numbers were like 90% to 10 new breweries were opening, yeah. existing breweries were a very small percentage by their expansion locations. Um, and that's what we've seen. And so that's what's great about being able to dive into the data a little bit deeper because you can look and say, okay, well, new brewing locations, 80 in 2018, I'm making these numbers off the top of my head, 95 in 2019, 107, whatever. Um, but if you don't know how that breakdown is, you can't really accurately read into it. Are brewing companies closing? and other existing brewing companies creating more of a network and putting their roots out, or is our new brewery opening still the primary driver of it? And we're seeing that shift where it's we're at about 50-50 now. The question is, will that become an equilibrium? Will that push back? Will it flip even so that right. new breweries are less common and existing breweries expanding are more common? You look at Sly Fox. Sly Fox opened up one, two, three, four new locations yeah. in 2019. Four locations just yeah. in 2019? Well, uh, I'm sorry. There were a couple in January 2020. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. But still, I, I, I'm surprised that they have four locations all in j- And they've total. got another one planned for Pittsburgh that's supposed to be open at any time. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So it, it's you talked before about the idea of breweries closing and the shakeout of the bubble or mm-hmm. things like that. Um, again, to, to nerd out about Bart Watson from the Brewers Association, he points out all the time is that any normal industry – from the very start, has a much higher turnover rate than breweries ever have. Okay. Right? The, the increase in closures for breweries is bringing it into the realm of normalcy for an industry more than anything, right? Okay. It's, it's an increase, so you have a certain reaction to that, like, oh, it's increasing, the closures are increasing. Um, but he's just pointing out, like, yeah, think about restaurants. Think That's about, what I was just about to say, yeah. restaurant. I wonder what the numbers are for restaurants as right. to how many new open and how many close at the same time. Yeah, I mean, the turnover. Isn't that a thing they tell you when you're younger, like most new businesses close after two years? Like yeah. it's really hard to make it those first two? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And, that, and that's the big question now is, is this sort of just a natural cycle where I'm looking at this list last year? Uh, I didn't count, unfortunately, but it looks to me about 12 to 15 that closed including early 2020. Um, and then that's the question. Is that a natural cycle for the industry or is there some other underlying cause that people are not aware of? I mean, I know that anecdotally some of the banks and lending have tightened up for new breweries. Sure. Um, it's not as it's not as exciting for a bank to underwrite that anymore. They still will do it, but right. it's, it's harder. Um, mm. 2017, 2016, you go to a bank and say you're starting a craft brewery and they're like, how much money can I give you? Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. What's uh, really notable on the closing list? Is there anything that's like a big surprise? I mean, I'm sure, I mean, they're all of them are unfortunate, but uh, what stands out is. Uh, right. Yeah. And you, you run into a little bit of favoritism when you do this, yeah. but I, I'm with you. you. You don't ever want to see any of them close. Um, the most interesting ones, maybe not, you know, the most important ones, but to me, the most interesting ones, Enix Brewing, in Pittsburgh was a huge place. Okay. They opened in, um, I think August of 2018, huge place. They had a bowling alley. They had a full restaurant. Like it was, it was this whole big thing. Um, and then they just closed in December, put the brewery up for sale wholesale. Just, we're going to sell the whole thing. So that to me is when, when 
you have OG like stouts mm-hmm. beginning to to uh, you know be affected by this, but also some of the brand new ones are coming and going very quick. Yeah, Salmon Pants Brewery is also one in Allentown. They lasted, pardon me, um, I think just about a year, and then closed. They, they said wow. that they sold their brand. It's hard to tell what happened, but um, the other interesting thing are places like Blue Canoe Brewing, which closed, and Lavery Brewing bought the location and opened up a, a satellite. Tap room or okay. a satellite brew pub. Yeah. Um, Mill Creek Brewing in Erie got bought, didn't even close first, got bought by Erie Brewing. Mm-hmm. And then Erie Brewing opened up a second location there. Gotcha. Right. So there's yeah. a little bit of the uh, cannibalization is the wrong word, but mm-hmm. there's a little bit of overlap where the breweries now are starting to come into it. Um, the only other one, and it hurts me to say this, the only other one that's, that I think is really interesting is Appalachian Brewing uh, closed their Westchester location um, in December. In December 2018, they had closed their Collegeville location, right? So we've yep. seen contraction from them without any corresponding expansion, sure, right? And th- that's one of those ones as well. Like you think of as like a steadfast Pennsylvania mm-hmm. brewery, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's sort of the rundown, and and the other ones all gr- all great uh, breweries in their own right. But uh, you know, that's just I think we're just getting into a business cycle of it. Sure, I gotta say the idea of PA Brew Review. Uh, and what you guys do over there for the consumer is equally genius as it is important. And and I feel like as somebody who, you know, I've been doing the show with you guys since it started, but I'm still new to the whole brew, you know, uh, craft beer scene. And I don't even know what is around me. I know the obvious, Levante, Victory. I know those places, but like, for me to be able to find your website and explore different breweries without even leaving my home, you know what I mean? Like just being able to be, Oh, I didn't know that place was even there. I didn't even know that place was even there. Or, Oh, I can take a road trip. I'm going somewhere this weekend. There's this place close by. And that's really, really awesome. It's really cool what you're doing for the consumer, but I think it's even more interesting. Me always being the entrepreneur mind, what you're doing for businesses, for the breweries themselves. It's big. And you can provide them so much information and so much insight to their own business is, uh, is really neat. And I could see, I don't know, a lot of breweries benefiting from that. Yeah. And and that's, that's the future of what we're doing. We're, we're in it now. That's where we'll be concentrating moving forward. We have some things in the works that will make the consumer experience better um, it won't probably won't be any new features, but it'll, you know, sort of an ease of use, uh, kind of situation for it will be easier. But yeah, to your point, I, everybody at home goes, well, okay, let me Google that for you. I can find out brews that are near me by Googling it. And that's true. Right. We, we could pat ourselves on the back and say, we're a little quicker than Google usually by ferreting out some of these new breweries before Google officially gets them. But it's, it's an insignificant enough period of time that I sure. get it. Yeah. But you go to Google and the Google doesn't tell you all those inf- those pieces of information about it. Does it have food? Does it not have it? You have to click on their website and then scroll through their website, hope that they can explain cool. to you clearly everything you were hoping for. We we get all of our information directly from the breweries. Right. We email them and say, hey, listen, people want to know if they're near you what they're going to get. Give us all that information. We just consolidate it in one place so you're not clicking around and scrolling around online. You'll get there eventually, but... Putting it in one place is the convenience of it. Well, and also you you have to know the name of something to Google something, right? So, like, mm-hmm. if I'm going on a road trip this weekend to Scranton for whatever reason, I can go to PA Brew Review and find out where where is a cool place to drink in Scranton, wherever I am. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And that's one of the filters. You can search the map and center it to a specific address or a town or anything right. like that. Um because I, I think I said last time, I always, when I go to a wedding or something, I'm like, how close is the hotel yeah, to a brewery? Sure. Yeah. I want to, I don't want to know where are the breweries in Scranton. I want to compare where my exact hotel exactly. is exactly. to yep. where the yep. exact brewery is. Yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. And actually it, it's uh, poor. We need to pour some more out. Um, that hot plotter was great for that. I was, yeah. I was going to kind of bring that up. Yeah. That, that hot plotter is a, it was a tool that it really was map based. Yep. And they're, uh, I use that a lot when I go out of Pennsylvania. I, w- I would use that app a lot to, to see what's around me. Are they are they just not updating it? Like, what's is it still going to exist? I wasn't clear. Is it no? I think, well, like if I click on it, is it just going to spin? That, that's a good question. I don't know if they're deleting the whole thing, but I mean, I think it was pretty clear that they were they were just not down. not pursuing the project anymore. So I'm surprised it can't be sold. But I mean, at the same time, I guess uh, you know why not just let that die and and you know yep. the next thing. 
yeah. comes out. But based on the email they sent, it sa- it sounded more just like a personal decision. Yeah. You know, and too much work and too much. Yeah, sometimes you just want to walk away from it and yeah. you know, you're not in it for more money or anything. It was fun while it lasted. But yeah, they were they were great for the road trip capability. We don't have that. I mean, ideally yeah. we're working toward that. Um, but the ability to plug in, here's where I'm starting and here's where I'm ending. And I can literally drag each brewery along the way, and it shows me how long off my path I'll have to go to get there. And it'll add four hours to my total trip, and so I'll be able awesome. to hit three breweries. Yeah. It was great. We loved it. Uh, yeah. we're, we're sad to see them go. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, we just cracked a beer here, so let's uh, let's get some uh, reviewing going. This is from Other Half. I got this in Rochester, but I believe this was available in Brooklyn as well. This is Short, Dark, and Handsome. This is a Mexican hot chocolate stout. With cocoa nibs, cinnamon, vanilla, chilies, milk sugar, and marshmallow. Says now with marshmallow. I think they most of their stuff you can kind of get both places. Yeah, you know, when I first went to Other Half Rochester, a bunch of them were, like, shortly after they opened, they had a lot of breweries come through and do collabs. So they had, like, six collab beers out for sale. Um this time, I was actually going to go to Brooklyn, like, the next day after I was in Rochester yeah, because the, the trip kind of worked out that way. But um, I, I ended up not going. But when I looked it up, they had the same beers. The only thing I wasn't able to get when I was in Rochester was the um, anniversary IPAs were all sold out. Yeah, that that was the stuff you were getting held up for. Yeah, I, I had a, had them on draft, and that's it. But, um, but actually, anyway, what do you guys think about this guy? It's actually good that we, like, waited to talk about this because it warmed up a little bit. And mm-hmm. I feel like it's, like – Really good. I took a sip like right after I poured it, and I was like unimpressed. And it's really good as of right now. It's it's funny. I read chilies, and immediately I want to taste heat and chilies. Yeah. But it, it it's not a chili taste, but there's just a warmth that just comes yeah. around the back yeah. side yeah. That's, that's nice. I've had like, you know, chili stouts before, stuff that's supposed to have, um, you know, some spice to it. And it's so subtle here that you mm-hmm. can tell that it's there, but it doesn't. If, if you didn't tell me and I drank it, I don't know if I would be able to tell you that this is a chili beer. I just would have assumed there was some kind of roastiness going on that, uh, that you know, um, was, was standing out more than usual. That's what I was going to say. I didn't read it at all before I drank it. And I, it, you said chilies, and I thought, huh. Yeah. You drink it again, right? you're like, oh, yeah, I can kind of get it, but you would never have put it there. There's sweetness with that milk sugar and that, that marshmallow that, that uh, I think is probably balancing that out. But, yeah, it's... I don't know, man. When I when I read Mexican hot chocolate, I was expecting a lot more uh, as far as you know, some more Spice. heat to it. Yeah. Did you want to? Do you have your hot sauce with you? You could put a little dropper in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it with me. But um, speaking of breweries that are opening, or or locations at least, Levante I saw was opening up full time at the stables, which I think was a pop up last time. So they were just Not doing this weekend last summer, hours. The summer before that, yeah. it was basically their summer beer garden. You know, and he, and they had teased us a couple times. They were opening a new location, and I thought maybe it's Pittsburgh. I thought I heard somebody say Baltimore, maybe. Um, but it's not that far away, from, you know, Westchester and Chester Springs. And I wonder if that's a, a really smart move that it is so close to home because – you know, sometimes Westchester is not ideally like where I'm trying to travel or where I want to go to have dinner or, or you know, that you can have dinner at, uh, at Levante, but, um, you know, to go have a couple beers or something like that. So I never went to the stables, but people said that the atmosphere there was just great. Yeah. Just being outside and, and I, we all love Levante. The, the, you know, you're in the tap room, but there's not that much there. You're in the industrial park kind of feel, but out at, at the stables, you definitely have a more openness to it, a more of a beer garden outside kind of feel to it. Yeah, same thing. I, I haven't been, but I've heard great things about it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to going to have a few this spring. Uh, yeah, I was there uh, when they ran it the first time, and you're absolutely right. And and that's why I think it's such a good idea is because it's yeah. a different experience. It's close to the other one, but you go for different experiences. And uh, they've done such a great job building their brand um, in in that area, in Westchester in particular, that I think it makes sense to continue fostering that and staying local. They've done such a good job with the shipping beer, yeah. right? Their, their product is still going all over the state. They don't have to physically have a location in Pittsburgh or anybody's backyard. Sure. Not that it would be a bad idea for them, but I, I think it makes more sense to concentrate at home. I think of when I see some something like that, I think of Stickman, and they have like basically the, the triangle of their three locations, and they're all within like 20 or 30 miles of each other, like equally spaced yeah. out. So, you know, they've got a bigger reach because they can coordinate them. Yeah, that's it's interesting that it's not like a completely new market that 
you're, you're introducing something new, you're close enough that people know about you, but maybe just don't make the trip that often. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think it is just a good move. Another thing I want to sh- um, give a quick plug to is uh, Ken at Winterfest. We're going to be there, and when this comes out, it'll be what, tomorrow? The Ken this- Brewfest will be tomorrow today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If yeah. today is today, the Brewfest is tomorrow. Really? It's on. It, it, <laughs> it's on leap year. Yeah, I feel like Scott. Yeah. Do you call it I feel leap like year Scott leap Bacula. Day? I call it leap day. Anybody know. get the Scott it? Bacula reference? No. Quantum leap. Nope. No. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Like, mean? there's like four people that are cracking up right wow. now. Big Bang Theory. What is this? <laughs> no, it was an old show on Scientist. Uh, yeah. The Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a song? Know. What is that? The song? Yo, if you get the reference, call 1-800-GO-FUCK-YOURSELF. <laughs> Text no, 44 Brews. But Ken at Brewfest. It's going to, or Ken at Winterfest, Winterfest, we yep. should call it. Um, yeah. If there are still tickets available, get there. It's a great time. They've got a lot of good breweries there. Come see us. 60-plus breweries will be on site recording, interviewing people. Come talk to us. Come see us. Uh, right down um, downtown Kennett Square. Uh, Saturday, February 29th. I say leap year. I say leap day. I don't know. It's leap year. Leap year. Dude, we still didn't get to it. We're, we're running out of time. We're about to go into Patreon. We're like out of time. But I really want to talk about Treehouse. I saw somebody post on Facebook that they made $100 million in can sales last year. It's it's They're built to put out cans but there's a lot them. of things that i want to talk about that are or that have to do with this so anyway let's get into it in the patreon let's go to do patreon. It in the patreon go to patreon.com slash mbn network uh for for everything patreon go there yeah. we're, we're doing a whole bunch of shit there's video there's extra half hour video extra half hour podcast uh you get signed up for the uh wild card game show which Russ was the first one to win, actually. Uh, yeah. Jackie, I credit Steve for yeah, losing. Yeah, Jackie won. I threw for it us for you. We gotta split side. that. So go go over there, sign up. Um, you'll get all kinds of exclusive content from us, including uh, parts that we forgot to record. CJ, you just leaned back in the chair, and I remembered you were here again. I keep forgetting you're back there. <laughs> but if I you're have no clue, so if you're CJ. on What's up, CJ Patreon, you're gonna hear us talk about this uh, Wissahickon Devils pool. We're going to have a little Lawson's Maple Nipple. Maple Ooh. Nipple. Ooh. We got more beers. We got more stories. Much more to talk about. MBNnetwork.com. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Guys, if you took the time to listen to us, we can't th- thank you enough. Mr. Steve, it's been a pleasure. It's been a great return. It has been. So happy to be back. Russ, thank you for hanging out again. Yeah, thank we got to do it again soon. Thanks for having me. I'm always happy. Taylor, hopefully you don't fuck up the Patreon segment. Yeah, hopefully not. (laughs) Guys, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week.